So in previous session, we understood the anatomy of rest services. So what is rest services? How I can send the request and in what format I'm going to get response and what different kind of STD methods we are going to use. And depending on the status, we may get different kind of status code. So now let's see if I want to uh, invoke a REST services. So what I'll do in the server, I'm going to write a REST service. So if I treat this as my server and to connect to this server from the client, what I want, I want to expose a REST API from my server. So I'm going to develop one REST service in the server which I'll expose to my client. Then how I'm going to do it, we'll see. So now in the Salesforce, when I want to do this REST service in server, what steps I need to follow and how these methods I need to implement, we'll see like get, post, put, delete, patch, different STD methods, how we are going to handle that part, we'll see. So whenever I want to use REST services in Apex, always remember in the apex we are going to write a class simply we have to create a class that's our first thing so when i'm saying i'm going to write a class so how my class will be treated as a rest resource or rest class like if anytime you have worked on a test class the moment you write a test class to identify that class as a test class what you do you you annotate that with other test same way, there is some annotations given which we can we can use to annotate a class as a REST resource class. So to develop a REST resource in Salesforce or in Apex, you write a class and annotate that, that class with annotation as at REST resource. Simply we'll use one annotation as at REST resource and then inside that we are going to write our class name. Let's class, my class name is XYG for example. Then I can write my logic inside. So when I write this REST resource annotation, it makes my class as a REST service. So we can expose or simply we can say, we can make this REST resource uh, to be called from the client and how that call will happen, I'll explain in upcoming sessions. But for now, when I want anything to expose in server, I have written one APS class, and that APS class I will annotate with other REST resource annotation. And when I do other REST resource annotations, one more thing we can do, we can define a URL mapping. If you remember, in the previous session I was talking, uh, when I talk about the REST feature, uh, each REST resource are uh, un, uh, identified by a named uniform resource identifier. I was talking will define some kind of URI or some kind of URL. So if you see, whenever I'm defining my REST class, I can give some kind of URL mapping. So after this REST resource, we give a bar bracket, define what is going to be my URL mapping. I'll write this in my developer console, I'll show you, but for understanding, I'm just defining here. We can define some kind of URL mapping here. So this is nothing but the name identifier of the resource. And uh, in with this mapping, also we can define while characters star, so which will point to any URL. And the URL mapping, what I'm going to give, it should be case sensitive. Like for example, I'm going to define a REST service uh, with the name as a lead wave. Simply, what I can do, I can define my URL mapping equal to something like this. I'm just writing here so that you will understand right now. And also I'll show you when I write in my Apex class. So simply I can give lead wave, then this like same as my URL format. Okay, so now let's see uh, this class what I'm writing, this class going to be uh, called by the client, nothing but I can say, outside of my org so whenever you write a rest class that class should be global simply you can see the apex class define it we should define as a global and the url mapping what we do it's case sensitive 
in which format you have written wherever you want to call you should use the same name and uh, in the class i am going to uh, write different uh, uh, http methods and for each http method we have given as uh, different an an different annotations like at the rate http get at the rate http post at the rate http put http patch http and these are nothing but each annotations which we have so now uh, for example if i want to develop a class what i am going to do let me just show you in notepad in the next example i'll show you how i am going to write in the apex and with a with, with one, one particular scenario to cover up so whenever i want to write a um, a services i should make a class as global class let's consider i am going to class name as a lead service for example okay so this class if you see this class is simply a normal class normal apex class we cannot make this class as a rest resource or anything till the time we don't annotate it with a specific annotations so if you want to make this class as a rest resource we have to annotate it with rest resource this is the first thing and each rest resource as you are my name identifier so for that you have to specify what is my url mapping and this url mapping are nothing but my case sensitive for example i gave url mapping as lead wave okay so we can define my relative urls here then inside this class okay i i said this class is a rest class now when i want to make a connection or make a call uh, with rest resources what we do we make call with my http methods maybe get method post method put delete patch then inside this class what kind of methods we are going to use how i'm going to identify which are my http method or which are my um, get method or post put delete what methods to do that what happen in the Salesforce, we have uh, some different annotations to do it okay so like uh, for each HTTP, http method we have annotations like http get post put patch so now inside this class we can define the methods i'm just writing one method now i can write http get as annotations then what is the method i want let's i want a method called global static let's i want to return list of lead okay what i want here let's get lead info for example i can write like this so now similarly i can write multiple different methods with each annotations and one thing we have to remember here if you are developing a rest resource then you cannot write two method with same annotations let's see i can say here get account info and this cannot be http get so one rest resource going to have exactly one method with same annotations if you have different methods with same annotation then it's error so we cannot have multiple method with same annotations okay like this whatever the uh, data you want whatever the std methods you want for each method you can define the annotations accordingly we'll see each one in an example in upcoming sessions for each one i'll do one on example and i'll show you how each method i'm going to implement okay so in a summary i can say whenever you want to use any uh, apex class as a rest resource simply annotate with rest resource with its url mapping and whatever the rest uh, methods you want to implement for that you use annotations like http get post put patch and delete and uh, as a uh, note remember we should not have multiple like we cannot have multiple method with same annotations and the class what i'm going to use it should be global and uh, uh, we should have the methods with my static keyword what are the methods i'm going to define so in the next we'll see whenever i define this method if you see now i define one method like http get global static list of get lead info it's one rest method with my http get so this method can be invoked in my 
get call when i make http get call simply this method can be invoked so now when i define this methods what kind of thing i need to consider okay so now this method if you see i'm returning some data here or i sometimes i may take some parameters like there is two methods where i cannot pass the parameters like if i have this http get method if i want to pass a particular string lead id okay some parameter i want to pass it's not allowed if anytime you have a get method in the get method you cannot pass parameter same way in the delete method you are not allowed to pass parameter in the post put patch we can pass the parameters but get and delete we cannot pass parameter but we can what what message we want to send we can send as uh, uh, my request body but in the method we cannot have any parameters like if i have post i can take the parameter okay let's see string uh, account name or let's see string account type what parameter i want i can pass on the post method but in the get or delete method we cannot take the parameters and uh, the parameter what i am passing here or the return type what i am going to get from the method what kind of uh, return type or what kind of uh, parameter we can use what kind of data types are going to support so all the methods which are anno annotated with are the http get post put patch so allowed return type and parameter going to be your apex primitive type so now your app is primitive type nothing but your integer string that primitive types whatever thing we have that allowed and we can pass a parameter as a s object single s object or we can make a subject record as a return type also like how i'm returning your list of lead i can simply return a single lead record also okay uh, or, or if you see uh, if you you want you can have list or map of apex primitive or a subject type or you can do any user defined type so now simply you can say any primitive type you want to pass a parameter it's allowed any primitive type you want to return from method it is allowed if you want to pass any object maybe standard object or custom object record single record it's allowed same way you can do only the list collection or map collection of primitive type or my a subject records okay or same way if you have any user defined type let's see i have defined a wrapper class or i have defined another class for example let's see here i have defined one class called as public class uh, my response for example so inside this class i have uh, public like you can say global or public whatever you want let's see for your understanding i'm writing global so let's see i have one uh, string parameter here let's say string status and i want to return this with string status and a string code okay the response what i'm going to send here so this is nothing but my user defined type so this user defined type also can be my return type or can be my parameter in my rest method okay so these are the basically the basic things what we need to understand when i'm going to implement a rest so in the next example i'm going to start uh, one scenario uh, how i'm going to cover for the gate and how i'm going to use post put patch so before that so simply to remember whenever somebody asks uh, how we are going to implement rest service in salesforce simply we can we can answer it you can use annotation rest rest resource with its url mapping and there will be different methods which will be annotated with other http get other http post other put pass delete whatever you want and in the case of get and delete we are not going to pass any parameters uh, but post put pass can take parameters and in the method we can pass parameters as a list uh, or, or map collection of primitive and associated type or single primitive record a single primitive uh, um, data or my a subject data or my user defined type data that we can do and my class would be global class and uh, we cannot have multiple method with same annotations this is the overall concept so next session we'll see how i am going to uh, implement uh, some logic in the server let's see in the server i'll have some kind of rest resources and how this resource is going to work 
or how I'm going to implement each method we'll see in the next session. Thank you. Stay tuned for next session.